Well, I want to talk again about our tongue and our speech and what we say to people and how we watch our words as Christians, because this is a really, really important subject and it comes up over and over again in the word. And of course, the devil knows it's a really important subject. So, so what does the devil do? Well, you know, the, think about it. The devil's people have no fear of God and they don't fear the judgment. So when God commands us to watch what we say, and that includes, by the way, texts and emails and letters that we write. I mean, what, what we produce that communicates to other people, generally what we say. When God commands us to watch what we say, <laughs> we Christians should be paying attention. The devil's people won't pay attention. What does that do? It creates an atmosphere in the world in which it seems like nobody's watching what they say. And what does that do? Well, because God created us to be in communication with other people, He created us to be in a social context, He created us to be influenced by what other people say and do, then what happens is if nobody's saying, what, watching what they say and do, then we end up talking like everybody else. And we shouldn't. And that's where uh, there is a great value in the Christian community and the Christian community behaving itself and obeying God when it comes to how we communicate. And <laughs> boy, does it take a genuine effort to watch what we say. It's astounding how fast things that you, you don't want to say and don't mean or obscenities and that kind of thing can come out of your mouth. It's, it's astounding how fast and actually the book of James talks about that a little bit. So where we're going to start here, we're going to read out of James chapter, chapter 3. And James talks a lot about the tongue. And buried in here is a really cool lesson in the middle. So let's start out in James chapter 3, verse 2, and it says, For we all stumble in many ways. I love that admission. You know, if you go around trying to pretend that you're perfect or are more perfect than you are, all, all it does is create this inner anxiety. You know, we all stumble. I love this. We all stumble in many ways. I read this verse this morning. I was like, yeah, me. <laughs> and, that's, and, and we've just got to admit that. And, and that's why we have a Savior. That's why we need the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need someone to pay for our sins. Uh, if you have not personally taken Christ as your Lord to pay for your sins. I've certainly taken him as my Lord to pay for my sins. Please do so now. Just stop the teaching and take Christ as your Lord to pay for your sins because you want to live forever. Believe me, when, when you get to paradise and it's going to last forever, it's like, wow, this is really cool. I'm so glad I did that. So James opens up, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, that person is fully mature, being able to bridle his whole body as well. The tongue ends up being about the hardest thing in your body that you can control. Verse 3, and he talks about how the tongue is little. He says, now, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole body as well. You guide a horse's mouth, you guide its whole body. Verse 4, look. The ships also, although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot wants to go. You know, you look at these gigantic ships and you look at the rudders, they're not that big, but they guide these huge ships. He says, verse 5, so, that, so also the tongue is a small member. You know, a tongue's pretty tiny compared to the rest of your body. It's a small member, yet it boasts great things. And that's really true. And he says, look how small a fire sets ablaze such a large forest. And it's really true. I mean, you take one, one match and you can set ablaze this gigantic fire. And the tongue is like that. Something can come out of your mouth and the tongue is so tiny. And then the next thing you know, you're in this firestorm of problems because of what you said. It's, it's amazing. The, the comparison is fabulous. And it's why we need to watch. It's one of the reasons why we need to watch so carefully what we say. Verse 6, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness. And... Here, here's the verse that has this kind of hidden thing. 
that I just love in James, because this is the, I'm reading out of the Revised English Version of the Bible, um, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, appoints itself among the members of our body, staining the whole body and setting on fire the course of life, and is being set on fire by Gehenna. Lots in this verse. <laughs> let's, let's take it apart. It says the tongue is a fire. Sure, because you can make a statement, you can't take it back, and it creates this huge firestorm of problems for you. Absolutely. It's a world of unrighteousness. And then comes this interesting phrase in the REV. It appoints itself among the members of our body. Now, the Greek verb is katastami. And katastami is an interesting verb. Uh, there's a number like it in, in that in the middle voice of the verb and the passive voice of the verb are spelled exactly the same. So you have to sense from the context, is the verb a passive or is the verb a middle? And so if it's a passive, in most translations, most English translations, take it as a passive, then it becomes the tongue is set. In other words, it's some force out there has placed the tongue in the middle of the body. But in this context, the, wor the tongue is a, is a fire, and it's a rage of unrighteousness, and it's set, uh, it's set on fire by Gehenna, by, by our sin nature, by the forces of demons. You know, and you're, you're saying, there, well, did God do that? Did God set our tongue to be a world of, of unrighteousness in our midst? No, he didn't do that. Well, the, did the devil do that? Well, no, the devil didn't create the body. What is God trying to communicate here? He's, he's using a verb that should be taken in the middle voice, and he's communicating how, if you're not careful, your tongue will appoint itself and say things that you wish it never said. Okay. I can tell, <laughs> this is definitely true in my life. I bet it's true in your life that there are times that something happens and you say something and it just, it came out so fast. You didn't really pre-think it. You were maybe angry. You were maybe upset. It was an emotional time, whatever. And out came this stuff. And it's like, what? <laughs> How'd that happen? It just, it just, it's, and, and, and so the text here, see, James is aware of this. God is aware of this. You know, this is human beings. This is the fallen human nature. And so the tongue appoints itself. If you're not careful, your tongue will go running off and get you in all kinds of trouble that you shouldn't be in. <laughs> and what do we have to do? What did James say? If you can control your tongue, you're fully mature and you can bridle your whole body. See, if, if we as Christians think that controlling our tongue is going to be easy? Uh, no, it's not. Um, it's going to take a diligent effort. And that's one of the reasons that Romans is going to tell us don't be conformed to the world. The people in the world, like I say, they don't know there's a day of judgment coming. They don't know what God's commands are concerning how you should speak, and they don't care, frankly. And so if we're around them all the time, we'll find ourselves speaking like them. We've got to spend some time with other Christians who also are working to bridle their tongue, and we've got to spend some time in prayer and meditation and talking to God and reading His Word so we can reflect on how we should speak and why we should speak that way. And we can bridle our tongue and bring it under control. And if not, <laughs> your tongue's going to volunteer and say, I appoint myself as the member to destroy your life. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make, make your life miserable by saying things that you aren't going to be able to take back. Absolutely. So James 2, 3, 6 says, and the tongue is a fire. It's a world of unrighteousness. It, uh, appoints itself among the members of our body, staining the whole body, absolutely, and setting on fire the course of life. Just makes life tough for you. And is set on fire by Gehenna. Gehenna here, the lake of fire, represents the, the fallen nature and the destiny of the fallen nature of man. And then he says in verse 7, For every species of beast and bird, reptile and sea creature is subdued and has been subdued by the human species. But no one's able to subdue the human tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who have been made according to the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth comes blessings and cursings. My brothers and sisters, 
these things should not be this way. And amen, they, they shouldn't. And we're never going to be absolutely 100% in control of our tongue in every situation. At least I have found it that impossible. But I'm, I work at being very close, or at least as, as, as close as I can be. Um, it's, it's a goal. It's a worthy goal. It really is to, to make the diligent effort to control what we say and control our emotion and to be humble enough to think that everything we think and feel doesn't need to be expressed. There's all kinds of things that I think and feel that don't need to be expressed. And how does God say to speak? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupting talk, and I like the way that's worded, no corrupting talk. See, so many things that we say, they eat like acid. Some things that we say, you know, they hit somebody like a ton of bricks, bang, and knock them right over. But some of the things we say just sit in people's minds, and it's like there's an acid in there, and it just, it just eats away at their image of themselves, or it eats away at their joy, or it eats away at something, you know. And what does God say? Don't let any of that kind of talk come out of your mouth. Absolutely. I don't care how strongly you feel. We never have the right to disobey God just because we feel strongly about something. I mean, seriously, we don't. He says, let no corrupting talk proceed out of your mouth, but only what is good for edifying according to the need so that it gives grace to those who hear. We're supposed to edify according to need and give grace. Does that mean we have to lie and be dishonest? No, but it does mean we have to watch how we say things, when we say things, the tone of voice that we use, so that at least if, if we disagree with somebody or if we need to be uh, in a position to contradict people or say something to correct people or whatever, we can do it with, with love and concern for that person's soul and not just because we feel we've got to say something. So God says a lot about what we should say and how we should say it. Let's make up our minds that we're going to obey God and not just follow our, our feelings. God bless. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful and a blessing. If you would like to contribute to the effort of producing these videos and having them go out all over the world, please consider donating at stfonline.org front slash donate and while you're thinking about things don't forget to push the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen so you get notified of future videos god bless